The global economy's future depends on a tiny town in the Netherlands. What this little town in the Netherlands does for the world is crucial to every electrical device on Earth. The name of this little town is Veldhoven, and located there is a company responsible for creating a tiny but significant part of all electrical devices we use today. I'm talking from iPhones to Tesla supercars, fighter jets, and even MRI machines. The product that has made this little town popular is called an advanced lithography machine. It is so vital that technological developments would cease without it. This product is so important to the global economy that we can easily say this small town of Waldhoven runs the world. This advanced lithography machine is made by ASML, a Dutch semiconductor manufacturer that enjoys a sweet monopoly on production and distribution of chips. ASML is a largely unknown company, but it enjoys unprecedented influence over the international economy, thanks to its market dominance in the microchip industry. Lithography machines are responsible for creating complex and extremely tiny transistor chips that are used in almost every electronic device you see today. These chips power innovations like complex self-driving cars and smartphones. Moreover, lithography machines are critical to the manufacturing of advanced processes used in the production of artificial intelligence, supercomputers, and blockchains. But the Netherlands' control of the world's economy has been prevalent for a very long time. The Netherlands' historic success with economy. Our story starts at the Rode River in 980. At the time, it was a little settlement with a dozen inhabitants. But in a few hundred years, its population grew to 500 people, and the populace formed a fairly small community. Unfortunately, a flood hit in the 12th century, destroying decades worth of crops, culture, and civilization. The aftermath of this flood was so severe that the surrounding land didn't recover until a century later. Ultimately, no one could have predicted that this flooded wasteland would one day become one of humanity's largest trade hotbeds in only just a few centuries. The path to becoming a trade hotbed began in the mid-13th century, when a dam was installed to recover the surrounding land. With that, Rotterdam was created. Not long after, King William IV of Holland annexed it as a part of his nation. A few years later, he commissioned the water canals that propelled this city's rise to trade power and relevance. For a long time, this canal was used for local trade between neighboring communities and countries, rather than international trade, thanks to the difficulties that haunted seafaring in the 1200s. But something monumental happened 400 years later. The race between superpowers began as European countries expanded their might through conquest and colonization. This race between superpowers was favorable to Rotterdam. One, due to its proximity to European countries, continental trade flourished, and it quickly became an international trade powerhouse. Two, while countries like Spain, England, and Portugal prioritized conquest and land amassment, the Netherlands took a different route by instead maximizing fewer select countries through resource exploitation and trade optimization. This strategy was accompanied by the adoption of a free market, a sound property rights policy, heavy investments in agriculture and general technology, coupled with research and development. All these efforts, from the trading posts and investments, to their free market regulations, produced the first Dutch empire and it dominated global trade. It was so powerful, Many reports claim that nearly 50% of all European shipping involved Dutch ships at the height of the Dutch Empire. The Dutch Empire allowed the Netherlands to control the global supply chain. Netherlands now dictated the flow of materials in Europe, from cattle and clothes to grain and spices. So you're probably wondering what's happened to the Dutch Empire? Do they still exist? And just how much power do they still have? Well, the Dutch colony is as strong as ever. However, it exists today as a more silent monopoly. 
Currently, the Netherlands ranks fifth behind China, the US, Germany and Japan in export volume. And not surprisingly, Rotterdam remains the largest seaport in Europe outside Asia. But that's not all. There's another monumental feat that exposes the extent of Netherlands' economic power, especially in the age of microchips. Birth and rise of ASML. In 1984, a joint venture between Dutch companies Philips and ASM International birthed Advanced Semiconductor Material Lithography, or just ASML, a company that currently monopolizes a critical part of the semiconductor industry worldwide. ASML was in the business of making semiconductor materials for chip makers, who then supplied chips to companies like Apple, Google and Samsung. Based in Waldhoven, ASML was a small company in a large market of semiconductor manufacturers. In the last five to six decades, the transistor industry has seen rapid developments that have changed the size and efficiency of transistors, with computing power doubling every two years. This development is called Moore's Law. Computers mainly consist of transistors that provide computing power. The smaller the transistors, the more you can fit into a chip, and computing power becomes more efficient as the chips become smaller. However, the US Department of Energy predicted in the 90s that computing power advancements would halt as we'd eventually be unable to make smaller chips. What many saw as sour news ASML saw as a business opportunity. So from 2010 to 2018, ASML invested millions into the development and refinement of a new technology to create microscopic, super-efficient chips. This journey ended with the creation of the world's best chip-making machine, the Advanced Lithography Chipmaker. For context, the first transistor chips measured one centimeter, while ASML chips are three nanometers long, which is the size of a DNA strand. Due to the ASML's advancements, some industry analysts estimate ASML to be 15 years ahead of its closest rivals. ASML's quality makes it a new age monopoly in the chip manufacturing sector, so much so that it has been in public discussions lately, with most reports speculating the potential benefits and drawbacks of such a large company's existence. Effects of ASML's monopoly and economic influence ASML has been said to have positives and negatives. On the positive end, it provides the machinery that creates virtually every chip in our electronic devices. Besides, these chips power many industries like healthcare, automobiles, artificial intelligence, military tech, and scientific research. For example, healthcare organizations need advanced, super-efficient microprocessors for medical devices like pacemakers and diagnosis machines that improve and save people's lives. ASMLs are also key to the automotive industry, as well as artificial intelligence and super-efficient computing, both of which are necessary foundations for creating autonomous vehicles that reduce accidents. However, this monopoly still has its negatives with one being that the tech company finds itself embroiled in a geotechnological conflict between China and the United States. You see, having the most advanced chip-making machine in the world translates to an advantage against every other organization or government. For instance, if China significantly lagged behind the US in computing and technological power, then chances are that other Chinese tech sectors like robotics and AI and efficiency would lag a great deal behind too. This is a core reason why the US partnered with the Netherlands to shortage China's access to critical chip-making technology. While it may not seem like much, this is the US's strategy to cement itself as a generation ahead of China, its closest competing superpower. The US deal with the Netherlands forces large chip labs to look for new and more efficient ways to operate outside China to access ASML's technology. Chinese industry analysts, however, predicted such a move a few years ago, and China, as a result, has taken various measures to counter the effects. One, for example, is increasing funding and research into local chip making. 
Although some analysts still predict China to be behind the Netherlands by half a decade, if not more. China's foreign ministry has openly condemned the deal, labeling it a violation of market rules and a disruption of international trade order. But to fuel China's woes further, President Biden signed the CHIPS Act in August 2022, offering $76 billion and up to $280 billion in incentives to boost semiconductor production countrywide. These efforts contribute to the larger goal of decreasing chip dependence on China while dismantling or at least disrupting their chip advancements. Dozens of chip makers have already announced large projects in the United States since Biden signed the bill into law. So you see, ASML is the heart of the transistor manufacturing industry and the decider of who gets the most advanced transistor chips between China and the USA. For now, the company's chosen to side with the US, but who knows for how long? How can Washington be certain it has ASML as a partner, when it could swoop its allegiance in exchange for a dominant position in Asia's vast and emerging technology markets? Finally, remember how the Netherlands accumulated a lot of power through trade and seaports? Well, there's the possibility we may see a China ASML partnership someday. This is because the Netherlands still gets half its seaport business from China, and there have been massive investments from the Chinese shipping company Costco into ASML in the last few years. The Netherlands' dominance of the world economy dates back to the first century, and it's now prevalent in the technology industry. But tensions between two major powers put ASML in an interesting geopolitical position. What are your guys' thoughts on the chip manufacturing war between China and the US? Do you think ASML and the Netherlands by extension will switch sides? Go ahead and tell us in the comments section. And if you want to see how pyramid schemes destroyed a whole country, then make sure to watch this video.